part two of Astro Militarium Codex Review. 504 Spartan here, and this is going to be the second part out of, I don't know, a gajillion parts of this codex. So far, I've been reading this thing, and I love it. There is no doubt. My favorite co codex so far this year, actually, and pretty much the best codex since, I don't know, Eldar and Space Marines. I know Tau is very good as well, but Tau came around exactly a year before this, so that's why they didn't include it. So, next we will be talking about the Warlord Traits. The Warlord Traits, in my opinion, oh wait, and the Orders. Warlord Traits, in my opinion, are brutally amazing. Um, I haven't seen any Codex with such good Warlord Traits. Well, let, me, let me put that that way. And um, I, I honestly have to say, if I, if between the rule book and this war, this set of warlord traits, this is the best warlord traits I've ever seen. For for an army, for a specific army, yeah, chaos only have like one good warlord trait. Space Marines have also probably one good warlord trait. Tau has like two. Elder has basically none. And uh, Chaos Demons are stupid Warlord traits. And, um, well, Dark Angels also have terrible Warlord traits. So, in my opinion, for a competitive use, I think every single one of these are very good. No matter which one you roll, you're going to take advantage of them. Um, the one that I say the least, and I'll go in order. Number one, Grand Strategist. You have um, D3 units. And those D3 units will gain outflank. That's pretty good if you like. Uh, it's okay. I think this one's the least, fa my least favorite out of the six warlord traits. Because um, outflank rules are not like it used to be. So it'll be a little bit different. However, you could still take advantage of it due to like f for objective capping. If you want to like have your uh, guardsmen come in like put them in reserves for no reason. Uh, well, actually, there is a good reason. And you decide, okay, um, I want to send them so that way they could get reach the objective faster. Uh, yeah, it's actually pretty useful. Now, the second one, Old Grudges. Um, this is actually my favorite out of all these. Uh, because it, it is ridiculous. Uh, during deployment, before... It, uh, deploying infiltrators before and before scout redeploy. Choose one Warhammer 40k codex. Your warlord and his unit has preferred enemy against all enemy units from the codex. That and stack orders with this equals retardedness because this is this is hilarious. You go up against any codex you like, any codex, and you, most of the time it'll be one v one, and um. You could just say, "Hey, okay, I'm, uh, I am prefer enemy Tau Empire, prefer enemy Eldar, Dark Eldar, Chaos, anything, anything, even my Galactic Empire dudes." Now you could have your Warlord can have preferred enemy against my homebrew army, which is ridiculously good. Um, will it be a uh, spam? Not really much because it, you got to roll for it, but. Especially, I'm anticipating to get some of these rolls because I want to. I want to now. I want a two on my warlord traits. Next one, number three, the uh, draconian disciplinarian. Your what's it called friendly astra militarium units within 12 inches do not need to take a morale test uh, for suffering 25% or more casualties. Basically, they're f fearless, but they could still go to ground. That is very good in terms of having a defenseless with Aegis defense line. Very solid. This is actually going to be probably like my third favorite because... Well, actually, I can't even choose. Honestly, I can't choose out of these four. Out of these six, I, I say my least favorite is Grand Strategies. After that, every single other one, I can't really choose which one's my favorite. They're all amazing. Uh, I don't care if I roll a... Two, three, four, five, six. I don't really care. I really will take advantage of that. And in my opinion, I'd say theoretically, they sound beautiful. 
So, yes, um, fearless, and I could go to ground. That is very good because now I could uh, take advantage of my Aegis defense lines, and if they die, they don't give a crap. So, well, if some of them die, some guardsmen die. Yeah. Um, implacable determination. Your warlord has relent, and his squad has relentless. And okay, this is very good because now I could have a command squad, a company command squad, and select my company commander as a uh, as the warlord. And at the same time, I could put like an auto cannon or last cannon and have mobility, so I could move and shoot with my last cannons for example or my auto cannons and I could probably get myself split fire so I could just shoot one side one thing and then my auto cannons will shoot something else which is tremendously good that is actually I, I'm gonna probably spam this uh, relentless thing I really like relentless in this uh, army uh, why because well heavy weapons team that's why I really like it I, I just that's my preference and uh, Relentless gives me a good advantage on taking, um, on moving and shooting. And I did that with Space Marines as well. I like Legion of the Dam, even though I haven't made a review yet. But uh, the reason why I like Legion of the Dam and sometimes running them is because of that Relentless they have and the Ignore's cover. So you can move and shoot with your multi meltas, which is ridiculously good. So I have to say, yeah, Relentless for me is something that I always take advantage on. Actually all these motherfuckers I take advantage of. These warlord traits are so good. I just can't can't hold them to say that. Um belowing voice um your the warlord and his voice of com and ha I'm, I'm sorry. The warlord has voice of command. Uh, if already has voice of command then your um he can issue 18 inches of of range for your Astro Military orders. So, like Synapse, you could, uh, like the Tyranids, uh, what's it called, Warlord Traits, you could, instead of having 12 inches, now you could have 18 inches. And unfortunately, Creed, Creed, he is no longer 24 inches, which is kind of sad, but it doesn't matter. I, I kind of like this, uh, that any Warlord could try to get up to 18 inches. Pretty good. I like it. Uh, Master of Command. The Warlord and uh, has a voice of command. If he already has voice of command, he can issue another. He can issue one additional order each turn. So this is even better. Master of Command and Bel Belowing Boys. I really love both of them. Um, I have a, If I had to choose one, I would have to choose Master of Command. Why? Because I'm always in range with my co my command squads, and um, I I would rather have a third um, command, a third order, because I I don't know I, split fire. I I will talk about these orders in a bit because I'm so excited to talk about them. So overall, warlord traits, solid, solid, solid warlord traits. I have to say, the best in any single codex so far. Um, well, obviously it benefits the Imperial Guard, a.k.a. Astro Militarium, but, um, yeah, I, I prefer these Warlord Traits over anything else. So, okay, Warlord Traits are done, and, God, I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to talk about HQ units, especially. HQ troops, I'm also excited because I have some stuff to, to say as well. Elites, uh, I have I have my opinions about some of the elite units. Fast attack, they must be talked about. And heavy support, my favorite out of aside from the HQs, my favorite side of the Astro Military Codex, the HQs. So, yeah, Imperial, and it's funny that this book actually refers the Astro Military as Imperial Guard. It's, it even says it right here. As an imperial, uh, an imperial guard army, basically. They even say it right here in the introduction. So yeah, imperial guard forever. You will not, it will not be forgotten. That's their name. So yeah, orders. 
Now, orders are aka voice of command. Any unit that has a voice of command special rule can take orders. And now, you don't have to roll d6s or anything stupid like that for orders. You just choose out of all of these. You just choose out of the nine orders you have. Now, some units can only can only order some um, some orders. For example, um, junior officers, aka like platoon command squads and tempestus command squads, they can only give. Uh, they are restricted to six or seven orders. Yeah, I think so. But I never use platoon command squads, so it doesn't matter. So. And let's go over them because these are very good. Now, in order to make an order, you need to have a 12 inch range or a, the 18 inch if you get the warlord train and you're lucky. Um, you need to make a leadership test with the order, um, the squad that is ordering, the command squad that is ordering. Uh, and you use the company commanders or the one, who, the, the dude who's actually giving the orders. You gotta think it, think it logically. Now, you roll double ones, you get to make an additional order that turn. You roll double sixes, you can, um, the order fails and you cannot roll anymore <laughs> that turn. Now, it's pretty chancy, uh, I don't want to say chancy, that's a Pokemon. Um, it's risky, but hey, uh, it's difficult to roll double sixes, especially if you have uh, Vox casters. Now, Vox casters, what I love about Vox casters and a lot of people do not use it a lot. Yeah, a five point upgrade. However, yep, my Vox Caster. Uh, failed leadership test. Oh crap, I'm sorry. Failed leadership test for orders issued with a unit with a Vox Caster can be re rolled. Re Provided. Uh, yeah. You can re roll your failed leadership test, your failed order test. And to me, I run that all the time. Voxcasters every single time. Hands down, a good five point upgrade. Uh, yeah, a lot of people would disagree about that, but I actually like it. So, right, so let's talk about these Warlord traits. The first one we have here is Move, 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 and this one is old now. This one's the, it's been in the last codex. This order, uh, the order unit must run. With determining how um, you basically roll d uh, three d6s, you choose the highest. That's actually very good. So you got a chance to get a, a six on uh, faster than normally just one d6. So that's very good. Uh, get back in the fight. It's basically only for senior officers, um, company command squad, for example. Uh, unlike, um, uh, uh, what? Wait, unlike other orders, get back in a fight can only be issued to a unit that has fall has been falling back or that has gone to ground. The order unit immediately regroups if falling back, but does not m make a 3 inch move. If the unit has gone to ground, the effects of gone to ground immediately be cancelled instead. In either case, the order unit can act, shoot, run, charge, etc. Normally for the remaining or the remainder of the turn, uh, get back in the fights. The same thing as before. Um, very useful sometimes. I used to before. Uh, I had to use them in one of my platoon command squads because that guy they were crying once due to a few shots and they got butt hurt. Yeah. So yeah, I I think it's good. Uh, not my favorites. Yeah. Take aim. Now your basically your guardsmen have precision shot. So if you have sixes, oh my god, you automatically, you hit, you wound automatically, and I think there's some extra rule. I keep forgetting precision shots, but I know that it's very powerful, and now you could spam that, especially in like big blob squads, like blobs of 50 or conscripts. Yeah, you just shoot, make, take aim, boom, you're good, you're good. Suppressive fire, um, whenever um, the order unit must be shooting, they have to shoot, and then they get pinning, they have the pinning special rule, so last guns with pinning, or any gun with pinning, 
it's a very good order um, against like mostly oh, what's his name uh, other mob squads like um, not orcs because they get the wog and they become fearless like for example other guard this is actually not bad uh, they will lose a few dudes and I hope they lose 25 percent and then they have to make a pinning test and then you know that's actually that will stop them for a bit smite at will this is by far hands down my favorite order and I can't believe I, I've been dreaming about this since I got the fifth edition codex and I read the orders over there and I've been dreaming for this um, especially recently I needed the, this uh, order because I lost due to not having split fire now you could order one uh, one unit that is Shoray shooting you could order them split fire broken as hell broken because if you have a blob of stuff coming in in front and you have I don't know probably a vehicle or two or some big monstrous creature uh, what I do is, my last guns will be firing at the blob. Let's just say a bunch of Termagons. And then the last cannon or auto cannon will be firing at like a Carnifex or Venanthrope. Because I want their shroud to be gone. And I want to insta-kill it immediately. Um, against a Carnifex, obviously you're not going to insta-kill it. But um, at least you're going to damage it. It's easy to damage uh, Carnifex nowadays, so yes, might it will. I think I'm gonna spam this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I, I hope I do. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. Fire on my target, better than before. Uh, better than before. Why? Because in before it was, you have to re-roll your successful cover saves. Now this just tells you, nope, screw you. <laughs> you get no cover whatsoever. Um. This is actually very, very good. Um, yeah, only senior officers can take it, so that means every single one of my command uh, command squads can take it. I have no problem not taking this. This is my second favorite because um, it's basically marker lights. Marker lights don't need to without the marker light rules, so it's very good. Definitely running this. So yeah, these two so far, I'm putting in this pile. If you could see. Yeah, that pile. Alright, first rank fire, second rank fire. I love this one, and now they changed it that you could just not only use last guns, hotshot last guns also get an advantage on this one. So, Tempestus, oh yeah. They're going to be shooting more. Uh, will I run Tempestus? Probably yes. I will probably run them for fun. I will never run them for competitive. They, they're, I'll talk about those later. Um, but first rank fire, second rank fire, they improved it a little bit. Um, it makes sense now, the rule. It really didn't clearly make sense whenever you read it for the first time in the other codex. But yeah. Good, a uh, good, uh, order? Yes, a good order. Very good order. Forward towards the Emperor. Um, basically you could shoot and run. That's basically what this thing does. You could shoot, you have to shoot, and then you have to run. Which make this actually very fast. Your army will be a little bit fast and you will shoot. So let's say you have a blob of 50 guard. You go forward, you shoot. Then after you shoot, you run to end cap an objective or hide somewhere. Because that is actually very good. Um, effective? We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. And the last one, bring it down. Bring it down is also for your senior officer. And he, whenever he gives the order, this order, um, he gives tank hunters now and monster hunters the special rules. Um, this is broken as hell. Definitely broken as hell. Um, if you're running heavy weapon squads, heavy weapon teams, and you have like last guns or. No, last cannons or what's the name? Auto cannons or missile launchers. Um, this thing is powerful. This this thing will screw your opponent up. Uh, even against monster hunters, even against a flying demon prince. Okay, you're shooting. Um, 
you have to re-roll your, your hits because what's it called? You need sixes, basically. It, because they're flying. They're flying and they're in the air. And you just say, you know what, screw you. Let me let me go ahead and re-roll some of my dice and then at least get a few sixes. Now, if you wound them or not, that's fine because they will have to make grounding tests. Eventually, they'll fail one, I hope. If they don't, well, uh, that's why you have the Aegis Defense line. And this is why I recommend the Aegis Defense line for Imperial Guard. It's so good. And it's still even better now. I think it's even better to use the Aegis Defense line now. And I'll explain, I'll re-update an Aegis Defense line review using this thing. And I'll talk about this whenever I go into the command squad. Yeah, so these are my top five favorite um, orders. Yeah. These are my top five favorite orders. So I'm bringing down Smite at Will, forward towards the Emperor, first rank fire, second rank fire, and fire on my target. Yeah, these guys, and two of them are actually, um, what's it called? Senior officer uh, rules, uh, orders, and then the other three are normal. So yeah, wow, I covered a lot. Yeah, my opinion. Love the cards, love the orders, love the warlord traits, love this codex. And in part three, I will be talking about the HQ choices. Now the HQ choices, oh my god. I love HQ choices in this codex. Hands down, very well. Okay, um, so... I'll see you guys in part three. This has been part two. Uh, part 4 will be troops, part 5 will be elites, part 6 fast attack, and part 7 um, heavy support, and probably my final uh, prediction, some stuff, so. And after this uh, first impressions like review, I will actually go for Tactica in every single one of the, after playing a few games of this. So I have like three... In two, three weeks, I will have another, uh, another set of videos about this codex and what I think about it. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Please subscribe, like this video, and share this video around. Because Imperial Guards players, yeah, we need to stick together. Actually, we all do. Even, even if you play another army, um, I would say learn from this. Learn from this video that what we are what our armies can offer like astro military and this is what we all, we get offered in our codex so if you see what we have you could actually go up against it and sure i'm not a big advocate of saying okay use your codex to beat this codex but hey um got to get as many views here so i will talk about some stuff that you guys could run up against the the um, Imperial Guard now. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.